am the Great Gazoo, and I thank you for rescuing me. Welcome to Watch Mojo. For this list, we'll be looking at the most disappointing, poorest quality, or inconsistent final seasons of animated series that started with such promise. Since we're talking about endings, there will be a few spoilers. Nothing could be worse than this! Number 10, Voltron, Legendary Defender, Season 8. To say that the final season of this once universally praised series was divisive would be an understatement. I'm afraid this is where we part ways. While season 8 got some positive reviews from critics, its audience score on Rotten Tomatoes doesn't even crack double digits. Viewers were especially upset regarding the faith of Princess Allura, one of the show's only women of color. Shiro and Curtis's wedding might have marked a significant moment for the LGBTQIA representation if the show had taken more time to flesh out their relationship. The pairing felt like an empty gesture after what happened to Adam the previous season, which showrunner Joaquin Dos Santos apologized for. Adam, I'm sorry. The drop in quality doesn't excuse the toxic backlash from various fans. That said, Voltron just didn't come together at the end. Number nine, Star vs. the Forces of Evil, season four. Star is one of the most energetic shows that Disney has ever produced. While the series never lost that energy, it did lose focus going into its last season. Throughout its run, the show seemed to be building toward one thing, only to abandon certain storylines and characters in the end. If you're too weak for this, you'll never survive against a Mewman. Toffee's presence, in particular, was missed for much of the season. While it's satisfying to see Star and Marco finally declare their true feelings, we should have gotten here much sooner. Okay, can we kiss? Uh, please. The showrunner could have learned a thing or two from Kim Possible, which used its final season to explore Kim and Ron as a couple. Where the Starko romance dragged on, the finale has the opposite problem with too many rushed elements packed into 23 minutes. Hey. Hi. Number 8, Drawn Together, Season 3. From the beginning, this animated reality show mashup prided itself on bad taste. In the earlier seasons though, the shot value was complemented by clever in-jokes and well-defined characters. See, look behind you, it's Denzel Washington. Denzel! By the time we got to the final season, virtually any wit went out the window in favor of forced dark humor and gross out gags. This might be acceptable if the laughs delivered. Yo, go on now, Mitsubishi, I have a small penis. <laughs> but the creators seem to get wrapped up in the mentality that if a joke is tasteless, it's automatically funny. And if you disagree, then you're just an easily offended snowflake. Which of these eight ass bags will be banished from the drawn together house? A show can be funny and offensive, but we won't tolerate laziness. Season three is so lazy that it leaves us on a clip show with many moments that aren't worth reminiscing over. Number seven, The Flintstone, season six. Some say the Flintstones went downhill with Pebbles' birth in season three. Others point to Bam Bam's arrival in season four. Even well into season five though, the show was still producing strong episodes like Dr. Sinister. Okay, what no? <laughs> Yet, most agree that the series officially jumped the Prontosaurus in season six with the Great Gazoo. Amenities are in order. I am the Great Gazoo, and I thank you for rescuing me. Like Scrappy-Doo, we're sure that Gazoo has his unapologetic fans. However, there's no denying that his very presence undermines the show's prehistoric premise and his grating voice doesn't help. Gazoo aside, the final season included some of the show's most boneheaded storylines, like Fred turning into an ape. Despite Gazoo's exit in the penultimate episode, we're not confident that the show could have recovered had it gotten a seventh season. Yahoo! Yabba dabba doo! <laughs> At last I did something worthwhile. Bye, Fred! Number six, The Powerpuff Girls, season six. Sugar Spice, Everything Nice, and a Dash of Chemical X, these were the ingredients for an awesome cartoon. Pooper. But the Powerpuff Girls lost an essential ingredient during its last seasons, creator Craig McCracken, who shifted attention to Foster's home for imaginary friends. Imaginative ones. Some kids aren't that creative, so they just copy what they see on TV. Powerpuff Girls was entrusted to the controversial Chris Savino, 
who couldn't maintain the sharp timing that McCracken brought to the table. It hurt so bad. The sunburn or the humiliation? Both. Following an underwhelming fifth season, the show officially lost its mojo, and it's JoJo in a sluggish final season. It's wicked awesome, bro. <laughs> With cringe-worthy episodes like Sunscreen and underwhelming villains like Pirate Crack McCragan. Get it? I be not Captain Crack McCragan. The Powerpuff Girls were long past their prime. However, we will take the final season over any episode of the reboot or that live action show that never went anywhere. We, we don't talk about that. There comes a time in every dog sitter's life where she must put her foot down and say no. Number five, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles season seven. When the OG Ninja Turtles series ended, audience felt it had become too dark and brooding after starting on a lighthearted note. After I crush your friends into oblivion, you're next. With the 2003 series, it was the other way around. Fans praised the first five seasons for capturing the gritty edge of the comics. With season six's fast forward storyline though, you could sense the censors urging the showrunners to tone it down. This is even more apparent in the final season. Back to the sewer. Nice! Get back! <laughs> Kid-friendly tone came with some jarring redesigns. The turtles have pupils now? The stories felt flat as well with the turtles having to fight another shredder with April and Casey planning a wedding. At least the movie Turtles Forever ended this incarnation on a higher note. Today, we're more than allies. We're brothers. Go Green Machine! Number four, Dexter's Laboratory, season four. Dexter's Lab had two opportunities to go out in style. The season two finale, last but not beast. I wish that I could have saved the world from the giant monster. And the TV movie Eagle Trip. While both brought a sense of finality, Cartoon Network decided to resurrect Dexter for two more seasons. He was the one who saved the future. What? No way. That didn't just happen. I wanted to be the one who saved the future. Unfortunately, creator Gendy Tartakovsky was moving on to other projects, and voice actress Christine Kavanaugh was on the verge of retirement. Chris Savino took over as the main creative force, which went over about as well as his Powerpuff Girls tenure. Not only did the show undergo an underwhelming visual overhaul, but the comedy became slower, weirder, and at times trollish. Of course, Dexter. It would be my pleasure retrieving that information for you. Tartakovsky might have returned for season four's Chicken Scratch, which originally debuted theatrically. But even then, the show had become a chore to watch. <laughs> <laughs> Number three, Gargoyles, season three. Season three of Gargoyles, AKA the Goliath Chronicles, opened on a promising note. That's because the premiere was scribed by creator Greg Weissman. Brave words for a man who hides his face behind a hood. After that, Weissman had little creative input. A shift from syndication to ABC came with stricter censorship, leading to Weissman's falling out. Thanks, Fox. These shades are way cool. The once dark, emotionally complex series was dumbed down with stories about Broadway going Hollywood, while villains like Demona took a backseat. The animation was downgraded as well, with the outsourced Nelvana taking over for Disney television animation. An equitable trade. If you want a Gargoyles continuation with Weissman's personal touch, we suggest checking out the comic series that started in 2006. That is, if you can find a four to collect them all. Seriously, Disney, we need a reprint. Number two, The Boondocks, season four. You might have noticed a trend with several of these shows. Once the creator left, the series should have called it quits as well. The Boondocks may be the most obvious example. So much of this hilarious, provocative, and insightful show was grounded in Aaron Magruder's biting commentary. <laughs> <laughs> With Magruder not returning for the fourth and ultimately final season, the show became a cheap imitation of itself, with the commentary being sacrificed in favor of senseless shock humor. I'ma get a spinoff show called Black Assistant Bitches Who Kill Their Bosses. How bad was the final season? Based on the Emmy submission ballots, 
the crew apparently didn't even enter it for outstanding animated program consideration. There were talks of Magruder returning for a reboot, but with that project scrapped, we'll have to settle for rewatching those first three seasons. I don't know if this is breaking news, but you know we've been wanting to do the show, and it, and uh, it, Sony and it's you know they they, they decided that they, they're going to pull the plug. So before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. The Fairly Odd Parents, Season 10. After the conception of Poof in Season 6 and the introduction of Sparky the Dog in Season 9, could this Nick Toon fall any further from grace? Nothing could be worse than this! Okay, I wish we could find Cosmo and Wanda and escape from the lizard vending machine! The worst was saved for last, with season 10 bringing in Chloe Carmichael, Timmy's new neighbor who he must now share his fairies with. And if I don't get to, it's gonna get ugly. Just like the theme song's updated lyrics, Chloe's presence simply felt forced with Nickelodeon desperately attempting to milk what was left of the series. Almost a year after the season 10 finale, Butch Hartman announced that he was leaving Nickelodeon. While the fairly odd franchise continued, Hartman's exit essentially marked the end of the original series. We wish the show could have received a more ceremonious send-off, but at this point, its cancellation was a relief. We need to work out our differences. Sorry, sweetie, but that's a garbage idea! Which animated show do you think had the worst final season? Let us know in the comments down below. We tried, Chloe. Actually, you tried. I'm not much of a tryer. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.